Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Master Passive Income Show. My name is Dustin Heiner, and I have Charles Rose Jr. here with me. And we want to show you how you can quit your job, that J-O-B, that just overbroke job, by investing in real estate. And today, we're loving what just happened this last weekend. Like, literally this last weekend, we got done with a fantastic bet that has turned people who have never invested in real estate to become real estate investors. So, Charles, hey, I'm so glad to talk to you again. Absolutely, Dustin. It is so good always talking to you. And it was just so amazing, like meeting you in person, Dustin. Like, I can't believe we hadn't met in person after all these years. And we talk like every week and then almost every day sometimes. So that was so awesome. And I remember like meeting you in person and you were like, oh, you're a lot taller. <laughs> Cause I'm not that tall. I'm only like five, nine, but you're what, like six, one, probably six, yeah. two. Six two. <laughs> there you go. I was like, oh, look at Charles. He's probably he's probably a good ball. <laughs> that was so fun, but it, it was so good to connect in person and to meet all of the other uh, communities and all of, of the students and master passive income and real estate wealth builders. So it was absolutely awesome. I'm just still like floating all week long, just just you know, me- uh, me- remembering all of those amazing, wonderful times. Yeah, same here. And so for everybody listening and watching this on YouTube. The Real Estate Wealth Builders Conference, the very, very first one, we just wrapped it up. And I got to tell everybody, and a lot of people have already kind of heard a little bit about what happened or it's like, you know, in starting it up, but I'll quickly give you a big, broad overview. So the Real Estate Wealth Builders Conference, I'll fast forward to the end. We had 200 attendees, which was phenomenal. We had 30 speakers. We also had 15 sponsors. We also had lots of volunteers. And I, and I kid you not, like literally 100% of the people, I'm not exaggerating, like 100% of the people, sponsors, attendees, speakers said they were blown away. They love the conference and it helped them so much and they want to come back. And so the Real Estate Wealth Builders Conference is all about helping people to invest in real estate. Actually, the tagline was really came to me very, very fast. It's gathering to make real estate investing better basically getting together. And so there was no virtual component to this conference. Literally, we come together. We're at a hotel in downtown Phoenix. It was, it's beautiful. Like right now it's March. It's beautiful this time of year. And so we got basically this entire hotel, got the ballroom, got speakers, got breakout rooms, and it was phenomenal. So I'll quickly tell you how it got started. So I was talking with Charles and another student, and they were saying, you guys were saying, hey, we want a meetup, like a master passive income meetup. I thought, man, that sounds like a great idea. But at the same time, that's a lot of work. Like if I'm going to go through the work to put together a meetup, you know, 20 people would be nice, but let's see if we can get a lot more people. And then I realized, well, I don't want a conference around me like Master Passive Income or Dustin Heiner because I'm not that egotistical. At least I don't think I am. So I was like, I can get so many more of my friends. So I started calling my friends who are expert real estate investors that have their own YouTube channel, podcasts, coaching, and all that sort of stuff, everything from land investing to syndications to Airbnb and like all that type of stuff. Because I thought, number one, it would be boring if it was just me. Number two, it'd be boring if it was just rental properties. And number three, it'd be fantastic if we got all of our audiences, 27 of us, all of our audiences brought us all together to create one in gigantic community. And this was in October of 2020. uh, Yeah, 2021. And then November, I said, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and do it. And I thought, oh my goodness. So I want to have it in Phoenix because that's where I live. And it'd be a lot easier on me. But then I thought, I can't do it in the summer. Like I need to plan like six months to a year, to, but I don't want to do it in the summer. And because nobody's going to come, it's Phoenix in the summer, nobody comes then. But I also thought, I don't want to wait a year and a half. Let me, let me just go ahead and do it. I'm going to do it in March. I'm going to pull the trigger. And so fast forward to now, praise the Lord, all that planning, all that work. We started selling tickets like at the end of December, literally started setting t- selling tickets from January to February into March, we got 20, or sorry, 200 people, 27 speakers, and it culminated in this two-day event. And next year, we're definitely doing it again because here's what happened. I was telling all the people like, hey, this might be the one time, like all the attendees, all the uh, speakers, everything. Like if it's, if it's a one time, it's okay. And so at the conference, everybody was telling me, and they were even asking, when are tickets for next year coming on? Like encouraging me, we got to do it again. Because, and Charles, you and I will talk about this the community that we built. Like my number one goal was to build a community, basically build a family of investors where we're all helping each other out. So that's where RubeCon came from or the Real Estate Wealth Builders Conference. And now looking back, it's it's like a, a week ago that we put it on. I am just blown away at how amazing 
all the community that they already came together. It felt like literally a family. What do you think, Charles? Absolutely, Dustin. It really felt like a family. And I'm I'm just completely blown away too. Every time I think of it, I'm just it's the memories are just so euphoric. <laughs> and you know, the it, we really uh, we really built community. I, I remember Dustin when we did the uh, all the meetups on Friday night, and it was just so awesome. Everybody was talking, meeting each other, and you know, a big group was like, you know, y'all want to go for dinner? And so we went for dinner at like this Thai restaurant, and <laughs> you know, they weren't prepared for us, but like everybody was so it was like one big family. We pulled all the tables together. And we just had a great time laughing, talking, fellowshipping. And everyone was literally saying that like, it feels like y'all are my family. I was like, because we are family. It was just a blessing just to be there, just to meet people. And literally, and, and I love how the conference was, you know, wasn't like a, a, about selling something to anyone. It was really about making each other's lives better. And I think we accomplished that in a great and mighty way because I heard 100% of the people loved it as well. And we already have people signed up for next year, right, Dustin? We already have 40 tickets sold in like the, the next two days. Already have 40 oh plus tickets sold. I was like, wow, praise the Lord. Like I literally, at, when I started this conference, I signed my contract. I signed a contract with a hotel in, I think it was November. I signed the contract for $120,000 guaranteed that I'm going to give the hotel if this does not go through. And so imagine signing that $120,000 with nobody even, you know, with no tickets sold at all. Well, I did. And then now fast forward and now it's going to be so much easier for me to sign for next year because I already have 40 tickets sold. People are already going to come. So that was a huge thing. But I, I do want to share with that time on Friday night. So on Friday night, all the speakers who wanted to had a meetup. And so we were in the main ballroom for Master Passive Income. I want to say we had a good 70, like at least probably 60, 70 people for the meetup. And what was interesting is I walk in and like people are already talking. They're already chatting and they're not like kind of rushing over to me. They're talking with each other. And I'm kind of off to the side talking to a few people and I'm trying to get over to the middle, but people are just so engaged. Like they didn't want to come talk to me, which is <laughs> awesome. And then I've never been so excited people going to dinner without me. In fact, I'm an extrovert. So I'm like, oh, I, I literally saw you and uh, you and everybody literally walk out of the room, out of the <laughs> ballroom. You're like, hey, we're going to dinner. I'm like, oh, I want to go. But I was talking to other people. And then I realized, hey, it's like nine o'clock. I'm going to be speaking twice and I'm going to do, be doing a closing keynote. I better save my voice because every, literally every single conference that I go to, I lose my voice because <laughs> I'm so excited talking to so many people. So next year, note to self, only speak on the first day. Don't speak on the second day so I can party and have a lot of fun. But you sure made up for it, Dustin, on the last night for sure. I mean, we were up like, gosh, I, all night just talking and just connecting. It was so awesome for us to do that. Like, it, it was just, I just, and you know, here, that more. I got it. Yeah, you're right. On that Saturday night. So all of us, you and a bunch of other speakers and other attendees, we were just hanging out after the closing party. That closing party was so much fun, such good food, but we had a lot of fun. And you took off like, I don't know, like at one o'clock in the morning or maybe midnight or something like that. And you went, you said, hey, I got to go get ready for the flight and all that sort of stuff. So you go to your room and then I'm literally staying in that room <laughs> talking with all the other speakers, basically my friends and all the, some other attendees. We're talking until like three in the morning, <laughs> maybe even four. I can't remember what it was. Then we get up like, okay, you know, I, I told everybody, Hey, I know you guys have flights. I just have to 20 minute drive home. Let's go ahead. I put you guys to bed. Like, let, let's go to bed. It was like three or four in the morning. And we're walking from the, from that dinner time, that, that room. And we start passing the lobby. I'm like, Hey, there's Charles and Catherine. Like they're now checking out like four hours later. <laughs> it was so awesome that I was like, wow. Like that, that was epitome of RubeCon was building a community. And so let's quickly talk about the vision for the wealth builders. And so it might be that I might put on more conferences that are wealth builder brand type conferences. I'm not sure how that's going to work out, but what I want for RubeCon and anything else that we're going to be doing is creating a family, basically creating a community of people who are like-minded, who can help each other, who are givers, who love helping other people. So we want to build a community. And I, and I got to say, we definitely, uh, it, it wasn't us, like it wasn't me. It was literally the people that were there that got the vision of creating a family, a community of other people. And so that was what I felt like my number one goal was, was creating a family. 
And you and De- Dustin, you definitely um, did that with the help of you know your team and everyone. Everyone was kind of like you know following that trend uh, that you envisioned for the conference, and it felt just like that. I can't you know tell you how how much I heard so much. Every people saying just like a family. You mentioned it as you were speaking. And Marlon, who did a phenomenal closing. Marlon's awesome. Yep. I mean, off the wall. I mean, the hit the, the energy he came with. Like he that was his message, family. So everyone was either thinking it, feeling it, or speaking it that we're a family. And that's so important to, to build that family and that community, Dustin. So that was a great vision you had for the conference. And I think we exceeded that uh expectation. It felt so awesome closing out everything. I was like, man, I, it could not have gone any better. I'm so blessed the way it worked out. And another thing that we want for RubeCon and anything with wealth builders is generational wealth, being able to think past just ourselves. Like, obviously we have needs. We need to pay our bills. We have to pay for expensive gas right now. It's like literally like $7 a gallon. It's just, I, who, whoever thought that it could be that stupid, but it is. Um, mm-hmm. Inflation's up, but we're thinking about now and we're also thinking about the future and how we can bless our children and other people around us creating generational wealth. And that's something that I want with RubeCon is creating everybody, helping everybody to create generational wealth. And my goal is obviously with my family, but I also want to help other people create generational wealth. So at the conference, I shared that one of my goals recently had been to make a million dollars in all my businesses, my real estate, online businesses, and all that sort of stuff, make a million dollars a year. That was my goal. But the sad thing was, is I was so bored. It doesn't drive me. Like we have enough money. We don't need to worry about it. Now a million dollars would be fine. I wouldn't mind that, but I wasn't driven by that at all. What I am driven by is people and helping people. So what I did was I changed my goal. And at RubeCon, I announced it to everybody. My goal is now, instead of making a million dollars a year, I want to create and help a mil- 1 million people to become real estate investors creating generational wealth for themselves. I know, Charles, you're doing that for yourself, building up your businesses. So that's what I want to see out of RubeCon is creating generational wealth. And that's so amazing that you're doing it already. Now it's just a matter of using wealth builders to help even more people. So I think it's just so phenomenal that how, you know, we're starting with the real estate wealth builders, and now we're branching off into all these other types of wealth building conferences because you'll be able to help so many people through that, and and I and I, I and I think you know you're 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 doing it so good already. I remember the, you should share with me uh, the two young boys at the conference who was there with their father, you know, from your church, and you know, so they how old were they, Dustin? What's what's the story on them exactly? I, I mean, I just thought that was so awesome that you invited them to come to the conference. These two boys that you're talking about from my church, um, I met them two years ago, and now they're getting older now. One is 17 and one's 15, maybe 16 ish. And from the, ever since I met them, I told them what I did. They were so intrigued. They wanted to learn how to invest in real estate. Like they're smart, they're homeschool family. They're the family literally has 10 kids. Like they just had their most recent kid recently and they'll probably have more. They don't see the need to stop. They have 10 kids. And these are the two older ones. And um, I told them I invest in real estate and they started asking so many questions. And I said, you know what? I'll just give you my book. I'll give you my book. You can read it and give you a lot of answers to questions that you have. And then we could talk more. What was great, um, uh, Morgan, the younger one, he literally went through the entire book and highlighted all the mis- misspellings. I was like, oh, <laughs> thanks, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> there was a lot of them. He, he found a bunch of them. But I, I told him, hey, guys, I'm putting on a conference. How about I give you guys free tickets to come? And like all three, the dad and the two sons to come to the conference just to learn. They were soaking it all up. So yeah, that was that's creating generational wealth for everybody that I can be around. Absolutely. And, and a family of 10. I mean, you kind of, you know, you <laughs> that's really good because you with, 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 the, with those three, you know, hopefully they can, you know, share the knowledge with the other 10. <laughs> the next thing that I want to have as a vision for the Wealth Builders and RubeCon is a giving, having a giving attitude, a giving heart for everything. Because as I was calling up and talking to all the speakers, I have, I know a lot of people who are, you know, influencers, they have their own channels for podcasts, YouTube, all that sort of stuff. And they coach people. And I know a lot of them. And I honestly excluded some, like I didn't call some that I just didn't feel like we were the right fit. But the people that I did call were absolutely the right fit. They are givers. And so with that, with us from the stage and from the, the, you know, 
experts being able to pass that down or explain that we are to give, like we're to help other people and keep that as a mindset for all of us. And so what I did was brought all these givers together to help to make sure that our community and the family that we're building at RubeCon is a bunch of giving people who love to give, not takers. You'll know who a taker is. We all of a sudden, like you feel like you're getting punched in the face by them just talking about themselves. You're like, okay, I'm going to go away. Those type of people, they literally weed themselves out because they just don't fit. They just don't fit. And, you know, we just gravitate toward other givers. And what's interesting too, one of the speakers, her name's Annie, a friend of mine, she goes, Dustin, you, you attract good people. And I was like, well, thank you. But it also could be that I detract or I repel bad people. That could be it too. But praise the Lord, we have a bunch of so many great people who are givers. And obviously, Charles, you being along with it too, we're all givers. We just love to help and get people. So I'm so glad you were there and meeting people. You were literally like the, the, uh, the community manager, making sure that everybody had a good time. That was um, so phenomenal. And I, I agree with you 100%, Dustin. We are naturally givers. And every speaker you had there, every, well, obviously the sponsors um, were givers too, right? <laughs> and so yeah. just, just, you know, all the people that, that you hand selected were all givers. And, and there's so many ways that you can give. You can give up your treasures, your talent, your time. And everyone you had there were just all people who who did things like that. Even some of the attendees, they um, I heard you know some of the attendees uh, talking about you know um, they really uh, they're inspired to to give to different uh, organizations in their community to help children and all kind of different things that they that they talked about using the wealth from their business to help out their community. So. This is so awesome um, that, uh, that that we're going to focus on giving in a, in a big and great way because um, people need this stuff, man. Absolutely. And I have a big vision for wealth builders and the real estate wealth builders. I have a big vision. And with that comes one of the values is giving. With that comes the idea of creating wealth builders foundation. Basically, a way that people can give where we can either maybe it's, it's basically a nonprofit charity that we're going to be helping other people, either building houses or buying houses so that people can have them all that to where we are all giving. And then RubeCon, Real Estate Wealth Builders, we're going to have this foundation. We're going to be just giving that to other people, like passing along the things that we've been blessed with. Hey, man, that, that, that is awesome, Dustin. I, I think this is going to be well needed. And I'm just so excited to see what this is going to evolve into. As you mentioned to me and, and the other speakers and everyone, you were like, this conference, you know, it could be just a one-time thing, but it's just so amazing that we did it. We did it, you know, successfully. And now it's evolving into, into this thing that can really, really help people and continue building that community, continue building family, continue building generation wealth and continue giving. So I love it, Dustin. And I think this is going to make a huge impact. Everybody, when anybody goes to a conference like this, you and I talk a lot. In fact, we did an, a new time, our new persons, like basically an orientation for anybody to come and learn about RubeCon, where things are, how things are going to flow and all that sort of stuff. And it, you and I tag taking that, that uh, uh, orientation was, I think what worked out well, like I got to start by, by just welcoming everybody in and helping them to understand the vision for it. And then you came up and just knocked out of the park, making sure that everybody had everything they needed. They, they got through more thoughts of like, how do we network better? All that sort of stuff. And what we love to talk about is about fostering connections and meeting people. Cause honestly, RubeCon came from, or it would not be here if, if I did not go to a conference in 2017. So I went to a, I was already teaching people. It was kind of, it wasn't that great back in 2017, but I was already teaching people. I had a couple of books and all that sort of stuff, but I went to a um, online business blogger and podcasting a YouTube conference. And there I met one gentleman, his name's Tom. He's a speaker, Tom Sylvester, great guy. I've actually had him on the show. And so after talking to him, actually, I'll pause that quick story. I went to my first session ever as a business owner. And I sat down and wasn't talking to anybody, didn't even care about doing it because I didn't know I was supposed to do that. I sit down to a gentleman named Jason Brown, super awesome guy. We start talking and he said, hey, so what do you do? And I said, well, I, I teach people how to invest in real estate. I'm an investor. He's, oh man, you, you got to meet my boy, Tom. You know, Tom, Jason's a great guy. So that's how he talked. You got to meet my boy, Tom. We're going to connect you. And so they were rooming together. And so they let me tag along for like two days with them, which was awesome. But fast forward, because I got to know Jason and Tom, I realized how that I need to foster connections 
at conferences because you would never know five years down the line how this connection could actually pan out. So all the speakers, I have more than likely met them through a conference or I met them through a podcast. And on the podcast, I said, hey, you're a great person. Let's have you on my podcast. We talk even more. And then I said, you know what? Let's bring you on as a speaker. So it's it, when we're fostering connections in our lives, we never know when it's going to pan out or you know something's going to come of it. But you just need to keep doing it over and over again because in the future something could come of it. Absolutely, Dustin. That yeah, that that's so that's so important. And I'm I'm glad you met people like Tom and to just to help you with this whole um, vision you had because you know you were already doing these things through Master Passive Income where I met you. And I know that it has changed my life so much, Dustin, because, you know, I have the great benefit of when I started my real estate journey, being connected to you and the master passive income community, it has made such a huge difference. And which kind of leads me into the next point was, is, is the, um, you know, it's so important to build community because it's great for your overall, your overall well-being. And, and it's, it's so important. And I, I have a story, Dustin, I don't know if I ever shared it with you. So when I was younger, I was, I was an extreme introvert. And a lot of people don't believe me when I mention that. And I always kept to myself. But when I, the- I definitely now I, I quickly say now I wouldn't imagine that I could tell you might be an introvert, but you have literally gone like I said, I'm crushing that I'm going to be <laughs> extroverted. It- isn't that crazy? Right? Like literally. So that that's just how I was. Now I do have to like, you know, be, because I was naturally an introvert, you know, I, I'll have to, I'll take a nap, you know, throughout the time and, and then come right back full speed. That's kind of what I did at RubeCon. And so, but I love it. Right. And so, but when I was, I, when I was younger, um, I just was, you know, ex- extreme and my, and my mom, you know, praise the Lord, you know, she really pushed me and, you know, to join different organizations and groups. And that helped me a lot. And I was able to uh, uh, realize the importance and the value of connecting with people, the value of helping others, the value of letting others help me too. And, you know, when I was more introverted, um, I, I was, you know, I wasn't as happy as I am. I wasn't, you know, so this definitely affected my overall well-being, being connected to people. And so in the same thing, when it comes to wealth building and it, it just just being connected with other wealth builders it's just so important for all of our overall well-being. Even my wife, who was a natural introvert, uh, she uh, she loved it at RubeCon. She met so much people that she wouldn't have met if we just stayed at home or even did it on all, online. So I'm glad you did, you, we, we made this in person. So it has even improved her overall well-being. And I'm, I'm, and I'm seeing so many others who c- consider themselves as introverts. Because I, one of the things I did at, at the orientation, um, it was right when when you you had to step out real quick. Was I asked, you know, you know, who's an introvert, who's an extrovert, who's in between? And some of those people who identified as an introvert, at the end of RubeCon and throughout, they were talking to people. I mean, they were just, I mean, it was just mind blowing. So this definitely helps improve your overall well being. Absolutely. And if you were at RubeCon, you would have heard my f- final keynote like, at the end of Saturday night. Right before Marlon got on, Marlon Smith is phenomenal. Like he brought down the house. Like we were all leaning on each other and like he was playing awesome songs that like fit in with his talk. Like we just, we bonded so well with, with Marlon. And, but my talk right before that, I started bringing up, hey, we're investing. We're going to be creating generational wealth. We want to be giving at the same time. So we need to be investing for three different things for now, obviously our bills, the things that we want and all the things we need. But then we also need to invest for our future, which obviously is generational wealth, planning for retirement, planning for making sure that we have things that we need when we pass away, but then also creating for or investing for eternity, how we can make sure where, you know, it's a proven fact, 100% of the people die. And so what are we going to do spiritually? And so I brought that in and say, hey, what's most important to you? And more than likely on your deathbed, your most important, what's is not going to be most important is your properties, your cars, your things. What will be the most important, your family, your relationships, the things that you have developed with other people. Because I love the idea that real estate is about people, not about properties. If you talk to any seller, if you just try to get the property as opposed to help the seller, you're probably not going to get the property. So what it comes down to real estate is about people, not about properties and having that overall well-being focus at the very end, hopefully it helped people get grounded. We're trying to do this, but at the same time, 
money is not our goal. Money is just, it's an in, inanimate object, but what happens, our attitudes can just chase after money. We could love money. We don't want to do that. We want to get the money so it can afford us to do many other things to bless other people. Now, the sense of purpose, like you were saying, Charles, uh, Charles is having a strong community with a sense of purpose of what we're going to be doing with our lives, with RubeCon as well. And so what I wanted to instill from the very beginning of RubeCon was the purpose of building a family, basically building a community of other investors, like-minded investors. And at the same time, the purpose is to create generational wealth and be givers. So I, I hope that that has come across. And obviously we got the family part. It, it was amazing how the community and family part literally is there but also bringing that generational wealth and that giving aspect as well. Hopefully everybody grabbed that. And, and I, and I love too how, you know, I, I feel like everything Dustin that, that we do together um, you know, one of the things, you know, you may not exactly, exactly use the word purpose, but you know, well, you know, what is our goal? What is, you know, what are we, what are we trying to accomplish? How, how, how are we helping people? How are we adding value? And that all ties into the purpose. And, and I think we definitely accomplished that with the vision that you had for, for RubeCon. And it's just so amazing just to be a part of this. And that kind of just leads us right into this next point, which is the uh, knowledge sharing. And, you know, absolutely, RubeCon, you know, one of our biggest goals was the community and, you know, building generational wealth and giving. But one of the ways that you do this is through sharing knowledge. And so Dustin had a ton of phenomenal friends who are speakers, and he was able to bring uh, 27 of them together to share their knowledge, to share how they did things. And it was just so amazing because a lot of times we just, we don't know what we don't know, right? And even if you're may, you may be experienced in a certain area, you know, you when, when you when you hear it from somebody else's perspective and you hear their experience and you hear their knowledge, it, it can help you so much to be able to build that generational wealth, to be able to give, to be able to do these things. And so just, you know, share, just, just being able to, to, to share our knowledge with others is really, in a sense, giving back to them because all of the speakers, you know, they, they were there to, to just help people. I remember Adam Carroll, he's so, he was so funny when, <laughs> when he mentioned how you uh, 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 asked him, what are your thoughts on, on, on uh, uh, giving a free speech? <laughs> <laughs> well, he said, no, he said, Hey, he, this is how he said it. Dustin came to me and said, Hey, Dustin, what do you think about free speech? And Adam goes, yeah, that's, that's what we're founded on here in America. And he says, well, how do you feel about giving a free speech at my conference? <laughs> well, because he's a public speaker and well, he's a good friend of mine. We've been uh, in a mastermind for like two years now. In fact, I met him at a conference. Phenomenal guy I said, Hey, do you want to come hang out with Tom and Michael and myself as a, you know, mastermind? And so, yeah. So for him to come and he's, cause I knew he was going to come. I said, Adam, I'm putting you on stage, dude. This is going to work out well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I love the idea of sharing knowledge. We even had two account or one accountant and one person that specialized in 1031 exchanges and accountants charge like a hundred to $200 an hour. Well, we had an accountant there literally spending hours with people, teaching them what they need to look out for all that sort of stuff. And you'd have to pay out like lots and lots of money for your account to do that. And this one was so much more knowledgeable. So sharing that knowledge and Charles also on top of that, having strength in numbers and having all of us together, we're not around, well, in our normal life, we're going to be around people who say, no, it can't be done. No, don't do it because they're putting their limitations on you, their own personal limitations, mm -hmm. projecting it onto you because they can't do it. They want to feel like, Hey, this guy can't do it too. So I'm, or my nephew or whoever, I'm going to project that onto them. You can't let that, you can't have naysayers around you. And so with RubeCon, we're bringing all of us, people who are not naysayers, who are uh, basically of like mind, have done it before so we can help each other out. And you have, and Charles, you brought up uh, some scripture that you thought would work really, really well in the idea of share, uh, you know, strength in numbers. Yes, yes, and and so, but, um, before I mention the scripture, Dustin, I you def I definitely want to agree with you so much when you said it's important to like stay away from the na the naysayers because you know those are the people who kind of like you know are the dream crushers, and so you have to be very careful who you hang with. 
And so not to say you're better than them or anything. You just have to be careful, you know, for, to protect your mindset, which is a whole nother talk, <laughs> talking about the mindset. And so definitely um, there's strength in numbers. And I'm a firm believer in this scripture uh, in Ecclesiastes uh, chapter four, verses nine and 10. So it says two are better than one. For if either of them falls, then one can help the other up. And that's so important. And that is, I mean, it's, can you imagine falling all alone, all by yourself with nobody to help you up? And this is so important. And, and I, you know, I'm not perfect. No, nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect. I make mistakes and, and things happen. And, and, you know, in the area of real estate, especially in other areas, I, I can, you know, I, I'm thankful that I could call Dustin and, you know, let him know what happened and like, hey, man, you know, how can I get out of the situation? How, you know, how can you help help me out of the situation? And when you fall, this it doesn't necessarily mean, you know, you did something bad. It could be, you know, maybe, you know, something bad happening in your life, a, a situation and just having each other's back in, 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 uh, to, to, to hold each other up is so important. And I, that, I I keep going back to Marlon at the end of the conference with the lean on me. It was so awesome, awesome how, you know, we played the lean on me song. We were all leaning on each other. And so it all goes back to this. There, There's definitely strength in numbers. Yes, 100%. I know you're going to hang out with Marlon. So make sure you say hi to him for me. Now, I want to invite everybody to RubeCon 2023. We're already getting the hotel all locked down. It's going to be in March, hopefully early March. For RubeCon 2023, I want to give you a promo code that'll get you $25 off of your ticket right now. Right now, it's literally the, er, the, the super, super duper early bird price because it's right after the conference. I'm going to give you $25 off your ticket if you come and use the promo code MPI. MPI, and you go ahead and use that code. It'll probably be good the entire year until we actually have um, RubeCon 2023, but use that promo code MPI and I'll give you $25 off your ticket. We just want to have you here with us. And so it's so awesome to be able to share these great thoughts that Charles and I have with all of you. We hope to see you guys next year because it's so much better when we gather to make real estate investing better and become a family. So Charles, thank you so much for being on the show with me. Thank you so much too, Dustin. And I'm looking forward to seeing you well before RubeCon 2023, but for, the, for, for everyone else who I don't see, I hope to see you all at RubeCon 2023.